Hey y'all, my name is Ashley, and today I'm gonna to be doing two different tutorials playing with black shadow. So if you wanna see how I got this look and learn some tips, or this, then keep on watching. I wanna apologize for the mess that my hair is right now, and that is because when I leave the house, I plan on wearing a beanie, and so when I wear a beanie, I like put a little bit of my hair up. <laughs> So that way there's no hair on my face and I put my beanie on and it just like, I like the way it looks opposed to just putting it on my head. That's why my hair doesn't look put together today. I am enjoying this cooler weather, oh, weather. I am enjoying this cooler weather that we are having right now. I know it's like, it's like in the low 80s and a lot of people are like, well you're wearing a beanie in the low 80s? Yes, yes I am, so. I apologize for my hair and yeah. I feel like my appearance is not as nice today. I don't know, maybe it's because I don't feel good and I just feel like I need to apologize for it. All right, to start this eye look, I have primed my eyes with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base in the shade Fair and then I primed my under eyes, bringing it up into my inner corner with the Ula Hendrickson Banana Bright Vitamin CC Stick. Whew, so both those products are such a mouthful. But I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing a smoky eye. And even though I kinda did a smoky eye with this Patrick Ta first impressions, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit more tips and tricks with a softer smoky eye in this first tutorial. So I'm gonna be using the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions Volume 3 palette because that black in there is a softer black that's not like high pigment. And you can build it up, but it's softer as in like it blends out kind of into a softer gray, and that's kind of what you want when you're doing a smoky eye. Especially if you're scared that you're gonna to be too deep and too dark, you don't wanna play with a highly pigmented black and then like have harsh lines because it's, you're doing a soft smoky eye with black. You want it to have soft smoky lines. So I'm going to start off by taking a brush that is pretty fluffy and but the the bristles on it are shorter so that way it's it's dense but fluffy and i find that when you're doing a smoky eye these type of brushes kind of buff things out smoother and i'm going to start off by applying the black on just my outer corner patting that pigment on the outer corner just like that so that's where i'm going to start and i'm not going to add any more pigment yet i'm going to start by now buffing it out towards my temple and to get that smokier look i'm blending it out here and i'm kind of doing this so i can get like the base of my smoky eye before i add depth into it so you always want to you can always add more pigment but it's always more difficult to take away that pigment and nobody likes to get halfway done with their makeup and then having to start over i've done that a lot and i don't like to do it so Slow and steady is the way to do it. Speeding through it is only going to make you want to start over. Now, obviously my black has turned into a very, very light gray, which is why I picked this shadow to do this tutorial with, but I'm kind of laying out the template of what I want my eyeshadow look to look like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add some more pigment and I'm gonna pack it on in the outer corner, like in the crease, because that's where you want the deepest part of your eye look to be, especially when you're doing a smoky eye. So I'm kind of just patting this pigment into that crease. And I'm gonna start to slowly work out towards the temple, but not as far as I smoked it out earlier. And I'm gonna bring it up into my crease, and I'm gonna kind of bring it almost all the way down my crease as well. And then I'm gonna just keep repeating that step until I get the depth that I want. So I had intentions on actually having this tutorial up last week. So turns out Ethan did not have school on Monday. I did not know that until Sunday night. So like I planned on filming one of the looks over the weekend and then I ended up wanting to film another look on Monday. Problem is Ethan was home from school because there was um, no preschool that day. They had like an in-staff day. Usually the preschool has their in-staff day on an opposite Monday that the school district has. And that was the case because the day you're watching this, yesterday, my kids who have are in public school, they were off. So they never really fully aligned with the school schedule because they understand that, you know, parents need to send their kids to preschool so they can go to work. But I, it totally slipped 
that Ethan didn't have school. And then I went to go edit the first look. So I was like, fine, I'll like scrunch it all in and try to rush through and just have a late upload. There was no audio. And I was like, you know what? It is not meant to be, you know? And I can't stress myself out over something that I'd rather take my time fixing it and refilming it than to rush it and it just not come out very good. So kind of similar with this eye look. If I rushed it, it would look like shit. So same concept. So I've kind of like laid down all the black that I want to lay down as of right now. But what I'm going to do is take a, I'm sure if this is not your first video watching with me, I'm going to take a clean fluffy brush and I'm going to buff out those edges. Because you know what? I don't like harsh lines. I like everything to look seamless. I like everything to look like it was airbrushed onto my face. And if, even if that means it takes 15 minutes longer to do my makeup, it takes 15 minutes longer because I want everything to be perfect. I'm also starting to like realize, I think cool tones are now starting to kind of, I don't know if it's the time of year, but I noticed a lot of people doing some cool tone looks. So I feel like it's kind of on trend to play with these cool tone colors which black falls into, you know, one of those colors that are used for cool tone looks. So I'm kind of hoping this video is helpful for just, just helpful. Now, because it's spooky season, I want to mix my black smoky eye with some color. So just give me a second. I'm going to figure out what color I want to do and then kind of tie everything together. So in one of my uh, latest videos, I did have someone request that I would do a full face of indie brand makeup. Um, I honestly don't have a full face to do indie brand makeup, but I'm gonna go ahead and use two different indie palettes currently to kind of finish out this look. Um, I do like to buy a mixture of brands. I buy from Sephora, I buy from Independent. It just, it depends. I don't really have a favorite or a preference. So if I like the palette, I like the palette. So I do happen to have these two from Gourmand Girls. So this is the Nightshade palette, which I did a full first impressions at the beginning of September with this palette. And then I also have the Spooked palette, which I haven't really got to play with a lot. So this is like the perfect opportunity to play with it. But I'm gonna start with the Nightshade palette because there's lots of purple mattes in here. And I think that's what I'm gonna go for. I have some like pinkish purple nails for my spooky set. So I think I'm gonna use my nails as inspiration for today's look. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the shade Belladonna, which is this very pastel matte purple. Almost like a matte lavender. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and apply that in my inner corner and start blending it into the black I laid down. So just kind of patting it and then bringing it up through the crease. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the Spooked palette and I'm gonna take a different matte purple. This one's the shade Cauldron right here. It's definitely a deep, dark matte purple and kind of use that as the shade in between the light purple and the black. So just kind of blending it all together. And I did take that purple and bring it further down onto my lid to kind of make it a little bit more spookier. And I'm gonna take that clean fluffy brush and just kind of blend all that out. But I'm gonna blend downwards because I don't wanna mess out mess up the black smokiness that I've added. Oh, and surprisingly, a lot of that pigment, I don't know why it did that. It kind of fell off. i try a denser brush. Okay, so before I step off camera and kind of finish this look so you can kind of see what the final looks looks like before I jump into the second tutorial, um, I'm gonna kind of show you how I, now that I've like kind of laid out all my colors, how I touch up the black and how I kind of make that black pop again. So I'm actually going to dip into a, a more pigmented black. So I'm actually gonna swatch this one from Gourmand Girls to see if it is like a, like a, a pigmented black opposed to like how the black is in the Patrick Ta palette. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and use this one from the Spooked palette. This is the shade, oh, spooky, very easy there. And I'm gonna take that same dense brush that I was using earlier to lay down the black, and I'm gonna use that to just deepen the outer corner out. So I'm just gonna kind of pat and bring into the eye look. So not out towards the temple, but into the colors that I laid down to go into my black smoky eye. And now to blend that black into like the rest of the look, I'm gonna go back into, where are you? I'm gonna go back into my Patrick Ta palette and I'm gonna pull out the black in here. 
just because it is a lighter black or a softer black. I don't even know what to name the different types of black. Do you know what I mean? But I'm gonna go ahead and use that to kind of buff everything together. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the finished look and then we'll get into another tutorial. Okay, so it is the end of the day. I did plan on getting on camera sooner so I could show you the final look. And then the, I had to go get the kids and I had to make dinner and we wanted to make hot chocolate bombs. So it just like the day got away from me because it is 9.30. So this is what the final look looks like. And you can see that I went ahead and took that same black shade and dusted it underneath my eyes. Um, and then took that light purple from earlier and kind of just like dusted it in the inner corner so there was a little bit of brightness inside of my inner corner. But I kind of just wanted to show you the completed look so that way you can kind of see what everything looks like together. And I did put on a very light pair of lashes. When it comes to my lashes, I have been really into just something light and easy, something that gives me a little something, but no, nothing over dramatic. So I actually have the Ardell 420s on. No. Yeah, these are the Ardell 420s. This is what I have on because I went ahead and bought 420s and 421s. So that way I had two different styles that were everyday wear to go to use. So I have the 420s on and this is what the completed look looks like. So let's go ahead and jump into the second tutorial. So for this second look, I wanna go ahead and do a halo look. And just like the first look, I'm actually going to be using the same palettes because I kind of want to keep some consistency to this video. So I'm going to be using both the Spooked palette and the Nightshade palette. And I'm going to start off with the shade Spooky, which is going to be the matte black in the Spooked palette because the whole point of this video and these two tutorials is to do looks with black shadow. But I really enjoy doing a black halo look. I like the way it looks on me. I like the... I like the edginess of that style. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm still not feeling myself 100% because I've also had stomach issues this weekend because I drank too much. But also, um, it was 52 degrees this morning and so now all of a sudden my throat is sore and uh, my allergies are kicking my ass. So it's great, I, I love the idea that it's 52 degrees outside. I don't like the idea that I've spent the last week not feeling so good because my body can't adjust to the coldness. So starting off with that shade Spooky, I'm gonna take that same brush that I kind of took in the last tutorial where it is a densely packed brush but it's still fluffy. But I'm gonna take that style of brush and I'm gonna go ahead and use that to pat on the inner corner of my lid Oh, and I did prime my eyes the exact same way I did in the first tutorial with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Eye Base in the shade Fair. And I did prime my under eyes with the Ula Hendrickson Banana Bright CC Stick because I love it. So I'm taking that and I'm gonna go ahead and just push it into my inner corner and I'm going to just pat it in. I'm also gonna zoom you in so you're a little bit closer. Okay, there you go. Any closer and you might fall into a pore. So this is this is a nice distance. So I'm taking that and I'm going to just pat. And I'm gonna do that same thing in the outer corner too. It's so just on the edge. Kind of like in the flat um kind of like in that in the kinda like in the first look where I'm just patting it in that crease of the outer bit of my eye. I'm not taking it out. I'm not taking it in. I'm just kind of applying that pigment, kind of pushing it where I want it. And then I'm going to take a different brush to buff it all out. So a nice, clean, fluffy brush. And I'm going to go ahead and start by bringing in the shadow into the center of my eye. I'm going to do it from both the inner corner and the outer corner, just like so. And then I'm going to go back in and add more pigment slowly, little by little. And of course, I want like the darkest point being in the inner corner and in the outer corner and kind of have the black be lighter as it goes towards the center of my eye. And then I went ahead and took it into the rest of my crease just lightly. And now I'm going to buff it all out. And as I'm buffing, I'm actually swooping it down because I don't want it to touch my brows. 
So the color that I want to use for this look is actually going to be the color green. And that's because I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to play with the same shades that I just played with in the other look, but I want to stay within those palettes. So I'm going to be using the Nightshade palette now. And there is some really pretty greens in here, but I actually want to play with this chartreuse shade here. This is the shade Bittersweet, but I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to the center of my lid, and then I'll start blending it from the center out towards the black on either side. Okay, I've got the color laid down, but now it's time to go back in and deepen out the black. So I'm gonna take a small detailing brush, and there's actually a black in this palette as well, so I'm gonna be using the shade Black Knight from the Nightshade palette. And I'm going to go ahead and just pop it into the inner corner and make that inner corner much darker. Because as I was applying the other shades, it does start to, you know, disappear a little bit as I blend. But I really want that, that black to be very dark to kind of get the full effect. And I'm kind of just patting and then lightly sweeping towards the center where it's kind of blending in with that shade Bittersweet. Then I guess I could have just really just used the Nightshade palette. I didn't need to use the Spooked one because now I'm going to go into the shade. Mm, actually, no, I am going to go into the Spooky palette because I do like the green in here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and use the shade Apple Bob. So this is a really pretty shimmery metallic green and I'm going to take it on my finger and I'm just going to pop it onto the center of my eye. Well, I guess I laid down that shade and I didn't really uh, kind of cover it all with that metallic green, but that's okay because I'm gonna go into the Nightshade palette, use the shade Flowering, which is going to be a really bright yellow glitter, which is gonna look really nice on top of this green, and I'm gonna have it down the center. So I'm actually gonna use a detailing brush to do this because if I use my finger, I'm gonna end up covering it all because my nails are overgrown and I need to go get them removed. Applying shadows with my fingers right now is not going well for me So I'm just gonna go ahead and tap that in the center Now I really want to get that yellow to pop just a little bit more because it just still isn't popping the way I like it So I'm gonna take a little bit of a white uh, Primer, so this is the Gerard Cosmetics clean canvas eye base in the shade white I mean do I have to keep saying that and so I'm gonna just apply it down the center of my lid just make a little line. And then I'm going to go ahead and reapply the shade flowering over the primer I laid down with a small detailing brush. And that is just so I can get it to pop a little bit more. So personally, I find doing an eye that is like a halo eye with the black on the outside and a black on the inner and the outer corner much easier to do, even though it's a little bit more intimidating. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this to my other eye and apply the rest of my face and I'll be back to do the under eyes. Uh, all right, all I've got left to do is my under eyes. I went ahead and finished out the rest of my face. I obviously did my hair and with it being only 70 degrees today, I'm definitely wearing a beanie. So I did that little half hair up, half down thingy again. And I already put on my lashes. So I went ahead and used the Ardell 421s because that's what I like. So for under the eyes, personally, when I'm doing like a halo eye that's got the black on the inner and outer corner, I like to do my entire bottom lash line black, but that's like not all I'm going to do. I'm gonna be getting back into this Nightshade palette because I, the, where is it? The other shade I'm gonna be using for underneath my eyes is gonna be the shade Bittersweet. So it's that chartreuse color that I tried to put on my lids and then I just end up covering it all up with that other <laughs> that other shade, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start off with the black and I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp it along my lash line. So I'm just stamping it. I'm not going to sit there and try to smudge it out yet. I just want a nice little line of black shadow underneath my eyes to buff out with a different brush. Just like that. And then I am going to go ahead and dip into the shade Bittersweet. So I'm going to just take that on a fluffy brush, kind of dust off the excess, and just sweep it underneath the entire eye. So I'm going to start from the inner corner and just add it to underneath my eye look. This is going to kind of tie everything together while keeping it kind of dark and spooky, a little edgy. And I'm going to probably pat most of that color into the inner corner to still add a little bit of brightness. 
but still keeping it pretty deep and dark. All right, I feel like this look is just missing one little thing, and that is a little bit of white in my inner corner. So I'm gonna be using the shade Enchanter from the Nightshade palette to kind of finish this out, and I'm probably gonna skip highlighter today. Lately, I'm not really into applying highlighter at all with any of my looks, probably because I have a luminous base and a luminous blush, and I just don't need a blinding highlight currently. But I will say, I am very tempted to go swatch the new Anastasia Beverly Hills one just because I, I want to compare it to Ambrizi because Ambrizi is like one of my favorite highlighters ever. Oh, there we go. The Enchanter is really nice in the inner corner. But yeah, so I'm going to be skipping some highlighter today. I also have really been enjoying my lippies from ColourPop. I don't know like why lately that's been the choice for me. But I'm wearing the ColourPop collaboration with, with Snow White. So this is like the Evil Queen set. So I have the Evil Queen bullet lip on along with the lippy pencil in Jealous Much. So it's like this really dark vampy wine shade. And I live for this shade during this time of year. And honestly, while it's cold, I like a vampy lip. So oh, zoom out. This is the final look for the second look. So go ahead and let me know in the comments below which one you all prefer. Is it a soft smoky eye or is it a more edgy halo eye? So let me know in the comments below which one you liked more. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. I do have another tutorial Tuesday coming up next week. And until next time, bye y'all.